Well, hello, everybody. It's your boy, Avery, and you know what this kind of chill intro means. This chill intro means we're doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode, so be sure that you hit the like button and the bell and all of that good stuff. It really does help the channel out a lot. You know, I haven't really done a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode in a while, and I was looking at the channel, and I was thinking, you know, I could do something meta-related, but I've already done a Mystic Mind deck profile. I've already done a meta tier list that people are just gonna hate on me no matter where I put decks, I feel. <laughs> so I just wanted to sit back and relax and do a little bit of a podcast episode, especially too, because I've literally been out like since two o'clock this afternoon at the time of me making this video. It's uh, like almost 11 p.m. now on the 1st of October. And uh, I was actually out celebrating my birthday today. And that is gonna be the topic of this podcast episode is that I am officially, uh, maybe I was already one, but I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh boomer. I'm going to be 26 on technically October 4th by celebrating my birthday today because ain't nobody trying to turn up on the middle of the week on a Tuesday. <laughs> um, but it's so weird to be 26 years old and still playing a game that I've loved since I was a kid. And that's not to say like, oh, as I'm getting older, I'm not going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! and you shouldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because no, there's a lot of ways that people enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! Whether it's collecting or you know, playing with their kid or just playing with their other family members. Like there's a lot of different ways to enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, good Lord. Oh, blah, 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 we, we blame the Ultra Ball for that. <laughs> um, and so it's so interesting to look back on like all of my old videos from like over 10 years ago that... I was making all of these hot takes that I I didn't understand the game as well as I do now. And there are still things about the game that I wish I understood better, um, especially like when it comes to more in-depth plays and seeing those plays. Like for example, when I was playing Sprite, anytime I would summon Nimble Beaver, I would always go for the effect of Beaver to summon out another one. But you don't always have to do that, right? You know, like if you already have you know, sprites in your hand, then you don't need to risk running into a hand trap on the beaver that can possibly screw you over. You know, you summon beaver, activate the effect, and if you get gammaed, well, if you don't have any other follow-up in your hand, you're gonna lose. At least by just summoning it, you can special summon a sprite, use the effect if they're gonna gamma that, then you've got at least that level two on field to let you summon your other sprites. And it, it takes, uh, I guess, not skill, but it just takes analyzing the game state to realize that. Sorry, I had to make a jump cut there. I was fucking yawning again. Jesus, I'm tired, in case you can't tell. Um, but making reads like that and looking back on my time with the game as a whole, it's it's just interesting to see how I've improved in that regard. You know, when I was first making YouTube videos over 10 years ago and not really knowing what I was doing, you know, I, I never imagined that I would, you know, get as many invites to events as I have. You know, like, I've gotten invites with, like, weird shit, too. It's never been a tier one deck, which has been interesting. Like, I remember I got my first ever invite with Cosmo. I'm at six and three. And then I didn't get another invite until I taught, or well, I say taught, but got my invite. I came in, like, 18th place with Trickstar. I set the uh, the formula for that because I was the first person to play pure Trickstars and somewhat top an event, like, that it was the first regional of that regional season. So when I got my invite at that regional and then everyone else saw my profile, then everybody copied my bill because that was only the that was the only pure Trickstar deck at the time. And so that set the tone for Trickstar, which was really cool. And then of course now we've topped with uh branded Eldritch and I think I topped with something else. It was like Cosmo, branded Eldritch, Trickstar, and there may have been something else somewhere in there. But I've never used a tier one deck and gotten my invite. Necroz. I remember playing Necroz when they were tier zero and I did terrible. I went like five and four. I remember I did a deck profile years ago that I'm, I'm really tempted to like react to in like a future video. Uh, but I, I did a Necroz deck profile and I went five and four. I played Dragon Rollers for a long time and I would go like six and three or like I would just bubble out. And uh, I still remember getting hit with fucking heavy slump playing Dragon Ruler. And it's like, really? Like, Dragon Ruler. <sighs> that that heavy slump, that heavy slump made me yawn. Good lord, I can't even, I can't even speak today. I can't fucking speak today. 
but that's what a podcast is about is that we can we can yawn and bitch and moan all we want but looking at where Yu-Gi-Oh has come from compared to like where it is now it's it's definitely different and I understand the frustration that people have with the game and I understand where a lot of the community comes from you know they want that simplified game you know summoning a thunder king and setting back row you can still do that today but i mean unless your back row is like just amazingly good you're not you're not going to be really winning any games plus what's amazing too is that thunder king has really fallen off like god i remember when thunder king was 30 plus dollars and like now Thunder King's what, like a dollar? Like no one plays Thunder King anymore. Which is interesting because you have a card like Thunder Dragon Colossus that's banned. And it basically does the same thing as Thunder King, or at least has a similar effect to Thunder King. So, I don't know. I guess it just goes to show how things can be power creeped. You know, shit. I, I, I wouldn't I'd ever imagine that we would be in a world where we have pendulums, links, and fusions, and synchros. Like all these things pl being played in the same deck um back when like I was playing an Edison format with like quick draw or like flame bells you know flame bells were considered OP because you could summon a fire dog attack into a monster get a flame bell magician attack with that and then main phase two make a stardust dragon and set back row and that was considered overpowered back in 2010 now if you do that it's like what like you have no omni negates bro like okay I'm just gonna go ahead and build my board now but God, times have changed. Times have really changed. Also, my thumb is much better. It's still uh, still a bit in pain, but I can actually kind of make more of a fist now as long as I grab like right here on the thumb and not on the bottom. Bottom of the bone here still really hurts, but I've just been resting it up and uh, yeah, I think we're just about good as new. Um, but other than that, I've just been uh, making content, pushing out what I can. That's what she said. <laughs> and uh continuing to enjoy my life as an almost 26 year old Yu-Gi-Oh player, which I don't know, like it's, it's so weird getting older because I never, never thought like I'd get this far in life. Like I remember being a kid, someone saying like, oh, I'm this age or whatever. And I think, God, I'm never going to get to that. Like I'm going to be yelling my ass off. <laughs> I'm going to be like, somewhere else in the world I'm, I'm not gonna get to that age i'll never be like them and it's like i'm getting old <laughs> and it's like in four years i'm gonna be 30 within four years i can have my own kid i could be teaching them about Yu -Gi Oh, which is that's insane to me but the biggest thing i need to do right now is find me a full-time job with insurance because we're still on medical leave from our original full-time job so i don't have that insurance anymore but life is good. Life is really good. I'm staring at the channel right now. We're at 958 subscribers and I couldn't be happier. Yeah, do I wanna be at a thousand subs so I can have ads on the channel? Yeah, <clears throat> but the ads are just gonna be paying for my medical expenses. It's not like I'm gonna be you know, putting the money into buying cards and stuff. That's, that's not what I'm gonna do. So literally just help pay for my medical expenses, which is why also I thought about doing like a Patreon or something, but I just, I don't want it to look like bad optics. I don't want it to look like I'm a small channel, give me money. It just seems like really bad optics. Maybe one day we'll do a Patreon or something if people want that, but I think right now it's just not the right time. I'd rather just stay on the grind, keep on putting out content, keep enjoying it. So it's not like a job that, you know, I'm doing it to pay bills because then it's just not really fun at that point. But, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is in a good place overall. You know, it, it's, yes, it's weird to say that when you're in a world with Mystic Mine and you're in a world with tier element that's probably going to be tier zero, Sprite probably being like tier 1.5, maybe tier two, depending on what happens. But life, life is good. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like now I'm moving towards the point of I still want to be really competitive in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I, I also want to accomplish a lot of other things in life, you know. I want to get me a girl. I want to settle down and have a family one day and, you know, have, have a daughter. That, that's the goal. I, I don't know if I want a son. I'm really tempted to just, like, try and get a daughter. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to be doing no one's hair. Like, that just seems like a lot of work. But 
who knows? Only time will tell at this point. I would love to be a dad. I cannot wait for the day that I get to be a fucking dad. Be telling my kid, no, don't be doing that. That's booty, booty, butt cheeks. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I had a fantastic day today with some amazing friends of mine. Just enjoying life. And now I'm sitting here relaxing, still enjoying my life. And making a video talking about a game that I've been playing since... I was in the single digit age since I was seven years old. So guys, thank you so much for continuing to be on this journey with me. Thank you for supporting the channel. A lot of great content to come. We're going to keep on that grind because this, this VHL, AKA my, my rare cancer diagnosis, ain't killing us anytime soon. And I've got another year in my life to prove that. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.